Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ventura County Board of Supervisors meeting for October 15, 2019. Uh, if you are watching and wondering what's going on with the video, we're having some technical difficulties and it'll catch up as soon as they can get that together. So if we could start with a roll call, please. Supervisor Zaragoza? Here. Supervisor Long? Here. Excuse me, Supervisor Huber? Here. Supervisor Parks? Here. Supervisor Bennett. Yeah, he's uh, unable to be here because of personal reasons. Mm -hmm. We are pleased to welcome Sylvia Taylor Stein, along with members of her board, uh, volunteers and staff with the Vol Ventura County Os uh, Osborne program. The, um, I am tongue-tied already. <laughs> Omsbun's, say that again? Omsbun's Thank you, Omsbun person. <laughs> I need more coffee. Uh, it's founded on the principle that elderly persons unable to care for themselves are entitled to dependable and consistent care. The Ventura County Osborne program mission is to assure the highest quality of life and care possible with our elderly in a long-term care facility throughout Ventura County. Welcome, Sylvia. And my pronunciation has nothing to do with the amazing work that your <laughs> program does. So our mission is very, very simple. We are one focused 501c3 agency. We contract the ombudsman program from the County of Ventura through the Area Agency on Aging. Our mission is to help ensure the highest quality of life for everyone who lives in a long-term care facility. Uh, we have disabled, we have frail elderly, and we even have some of our mental health population now living in our long-term care facilities. But our job is to help ensure that they have the highest quality of life possible and uh, we're their advocate in those facilities. Let's make sure I use this thing, okay. Uh, we believe our premise is all life has value. Older adults deserve to live in the least restrictive environment, free from fear, with the highest quality of care and life possible. That's the Nursing Home Reform Act of 1987, and we're still trying to enforce that act here in 2019. Um, the where do the long-term care residents live in Ventura County? 2,400 live in 19 nursing homes. 5,541 live in 215 assisted living or residential care facilities for the elderly. 60% of those in nursing homes have no family or friends who ever visit them or look out for them. The ombudsman fills a vital need in the lives of long-term care residents. In 2018-19, we provided 1,428 visits to the uh, residents in the 19 nursing homes. We provided 3,099 visits to residents in assisted living. Our volunteers and staff drove 52,686 miles, and, and our volunteers donated 8,710 hours to the residents living in our long-term care facilities. One ombudsman makes a huge difference. We serve a population that is really invisible. Uh, most people in our community don't go into nursing homes or assisted living facilities. Uh, the residents there have very few visitors. So we, we try to level that playing field and advocate for these individuals who have no one. And those who even have some family who aren't working in their best interest, uh, we are their representative and we are their advocate. I'd like to share with you this morning the saga of Stephen. Uh, Stephen's case is one that um, was really our Rubicon. It was uh, a situation where an 83-year-old World War II veteran came into our county from Ohio. He was brought by his daughter, and um, he had had knee surgery back in Ohio, and he thought that um, that was no big deal. His uh, common-law wife had gone to Florida to visit family, and Stephen had decided he loved to play golf, and his knee was interfering with his golf game. So he decided to have knee surgery back in Ohio. He went under the, uh, of course, the anesthesia had a very negative uh, effect on him, and he became delusional and, del and had delirium. So his daughter, who lived here in Ventura, flew back to there, to Youngstown, Ohio, and drove him cross country to bring him here. Um, Steve um, came here with the understanding he'd be living with his daughter. In no time at all, uh, he realized that was not the case. His daughter placed him in a small six-bed facility in Oxnard. He decided he needed an attorney. So one day he left, caught the bus, went downtown, and he was looking for an attorney, and he couldn't find an attorney, nor could he find his way back home. With that 
information, his daughter was able to label him as a wanderer. And she and uh, she got a diagnosis that he had Alzheimer's, that he had dementia, and she placed him in a dementia facility in our county. An 83-year-old ombudsman volunteer was assigned to his facility. She went in and she could tell immediately that he did not belong in this facility. As Stephen was very clear, he wanted to go home. He was very coherent. He had won $500 on the lottery. He was very mad because the facility had taken the money away from him and given it to his daughter for safekeeping. So she came back to the office that day. Uh, her name's Marie. And she said, I really think there's something going on here. So she asked us to go and check on Stephen. Um, I went out and interviewed Stephen and found out that this man did not have dementia. This man was just as clear as I was or the people I work with in my office. So we began to advocate for Stephen, but Stephen's daughter had a different plan for him. Stephen's daughter wanted to control him, to take over his life, to get a conservatorship. We had a six-month saga of the most horrific things you can imagine to a person. He was at, almost kidnapped out of the county. He did end up getting taken out of the county and placed in a psych ward in Los Angeles County. It took us a while to find him. He called me every day crying. Please come get me. Please take me home. Please get me back to Ohio. This went on for six months. His daughter was able to finally appeal for conservatorship, which brought him back to Ventura County and back to us. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we started working with our public defender, Mary Webster, uh, Mary Shea at the time, and our investigators in the public defender's office. We provided every bit of documentation we could. So many people would not help Stephen because they believed the medical diagnosis. The medical diagnosis was wrong. He did not have dementia. And actually, he came back to the county, and where they had had him locked up in a psych ward, they placed him in an assisted living facility where he had total freedom. He could go to the store. He could go shopping. He could do anything he wanted to do. So we got him back here, and uh, he went before a judge right here in Ventura, who had actually really studied the documentation. And when he got up before her, she asked him, do you want to go back to Youngstown, Ohio? He said, I do. And she said, you're going back. And so Stephen had a very happy ending. Stephen's life was over. And he, when he called us, he said, every day, he said, if you don't get me out of here, I will die. So his life was over. And it was the 83-year-old volunteer who saw him who brought him to our attention, and, and we were able to get Stephen back home. He lived another seven years, actively participating in civic organizations. He was a veteran. He was in the veterans organization. He lived another seven years doing the life he wanted to do, living the life he wanted to live. And so a happy ending and a tearful Stephen was on his way back to Ohio. So I ask you, what is the value of one Marie? one 83-year-old ombudsman. I hope that none of us ever find ourselves in a position where we have no one or the person we're leaning on is not looking out for us and is only hurting us. And if we do ever find ourselves there, I sure hope we have a Marie. And this program will continue to have Maries as long as it stays healthy and whole in this county. And that brings me to all of you. You have been so supportive of the Ombudsman program here. When we lost all our funding, you stepped up to help us. And Stephen, um, Supervisor Bennett has been a champion. And I so want to thank him. And I'm thanking him in his absence for all he's done for this program. We are not big. We're small. We're a little 501c3 nonprofit. We only have six paid staff. Two are uh, part-time. We have 53 ombudsman volunteers, and we have an eight-member board of directors. We're what you'd call a lean machine. However, we need volunteers. And our goal is to get more folks in this county involved in this work. It's good work. It's substantial work. It's God's work. And we would love to see more people join our team. So I just want to thank you for having us here today. And um, here's our contact information. So if anyone wants to get involved with the program, we would love Absolutely love to have them. Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate that. And thank all the volunteers. It's really important for our seniors to, uh, to have somebody that cares. And what a story. That is, it is fantastic. Another seven years, it's just unbelievable. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for all the volunteers. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also want to say thank you. <clears throat> You're also going out to the convalescent homes and helping people who don't have families. Mm -hmm. And like the majority of them don't have families coming and visiting with them. And just to have someone looking in on them is so important for their mental as well as their physical uh, well health. So I just really appreciate the work that you do. And um, you really do do God's work. And I do hope uh, you'll get lots of people volunteering and what a, how long does a volunteer have to work is it like once a week or it, it we are flexible we work with everyone we have people who work full time who do this work so you know we're we're so flexible in how we can work with your schedule and there's no certain amount of time that is that is required so you go to uh, ombudsmanventura.org and you can sign up to volunteer that way too thank you Sylvia, thank you again for yourself, your board members, and volunteers for all their time. It's um, staggering to hear 60% of all uh, those in the nursing homes have no family or friends. And it's so important that we do have advocates like you, all of you here for our community. So I really appreciate it. I know Supervisor Bennett really wanted to be here and support you here today. But just thank you very much, and please pass that along to all of your members as well. I want to add my thank you for your deep commitment to this, this process. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Next up is Patricia Lacey. <clears throat> Good morning, supervisors. Good morning. I'm pleased to be here. My name again is Patricia. I've been here for the last tw two times, two meetings. And I'm the daughter of Stanley Zirko, who is 102 years old and unfortunately caught up in the Ventura County Public Guardian's web, all because I have a hearing deficit and I was denied hearing accommodations to understand the proceedings to make appropriate decisions. The speech by Ms. Taylor was riveting I, just now. I am, I am floored. She's wonderful. What is happening to Stephen has happened to my father right now. And I'm so happy that the Board of Supervisors are also are taking uh, a positive approach to what Stephen has happened, that they allowed him to go back to Ohio. We need your help to help my father in the same fashion. The public guardian abuse is rampant throughout the nation, and I strongly suggest viewing the documentary The Guardians by Billy Mintz. I will leave this for you, and hopefully that one of you at least will, will view it. Mr. Nate Miley, chair of the Alameda County Board of Supervisors, has embraced this documentary and pledged his support and advocacy for all conservatives of his county to eradicate such abuse. You will see the mirror image of all the horrific acts caused by the public guardian abuse throughout the nation and to my father and myself. After they seized my father's $138,000, he was sent a check for $5, representing his life savings. And now APS, we made 25 APS reports on elder abuse, and all were closed out immediately by the public guardian. I'm not allowed to know the reason, and I must obtain a subpoena for the report. Public guardian canceled out our IHSS that I finally obtained. They, they didn't want us to have it not allowed to make an elder abuse report at the Thousand Oaks Sheriff's Department. We, we made an appointment to make an elder abuse report, which was a little bit suspicious, but the senior deputy only wanted to discuss my father's marital status and refused to take a report. She claimed there was no elder abuse and would not listen to the crimes committed. We discovered an elder abuse was made, but it closed out. A copy of the report was obtained, but the elder abuse was redacted. Public guardian abuse. In order to separate my father and myself, the public guardian made a false allegation to the court that I absconded with $138,000. Ms. Boca Negra and Mr. Davis of the public guardian had no evidence of such occurrence. They held an ex parte hearing, and Mr. Davis stated in transcripts, and I quote, it is by design that we did not notice Ms. Lacey, and sorry that we didn't give notice to Ms. Lacey, end of quote. In the order approving ex parte application under the probate code section 850, due notice of this hearing has been given to re as required by law. No, it wasn't. In reviewing the code, my father and myself were to, were to be noticed. Also, declarations were signed under penalty of perjury. In, the case, in this case, county counsel are the judge, the jury, and the prosecution, and the counsel representing the accuser and the accused. What Thank about you. the due process? Supervisors, you can stop this torment. Thank you very Go much. Go after Ventura County like Ms. Miley is Patricia. from Alameda County. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Julie Inglis. I happened to be here as well on the Zerko. We came to you for help as the supervisory committee over the adult protective services. It's the appropriate courts. However, it's becoming clear that the APS can send the Board of Supervisors in a statement, and that is sufficient and taken at their word in lieu of auditing and supervising the department would seem like a simple request. I've worked personally in the medical industry for 95% of my career and haven't seen actions and self-will without separation. Statements were in place to read as we must have expected it's fine, but I wish the statements and the facts were correct. Adults have life experiences. Mr. Zirko has been before you twice, is cognitive, and it's an honor to know him. His requests have been denied, which in legal documents and medical records indicate if he has, is removed from the home of Miss Lacey his life expectancy will be removed and diminished. Is the board aware of the new law that went into effect 1010 SB 338 Senior and Disability Victimization? The APS has sent out an email that a nurse is coming to assist in placement. With the new bill, if he is transferred and passes of even natural causes, it is to be considered homicide. Why? He's lived in the American dream, wishes to live in freedom and reside with his daughter in peace, who happens to be a registered nurse and the mutual love is obvious. He has 24-7 care. Are you aware of the nurse to patient ratios in your convalescent hospitals and acute care facilities? Who will be taking him to activities? If I ever had an employee that caused one of my patients fear, terror, trauma, and PTSD, which is documented, then an employee, public guardian that's more conductive would be assigned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One brief thing, please. It said that we in the county of Ventura have the responsibility that it is to take care of the most vulnerable people in Ventura. I hope that the county does the right thing and supervises and oversees the service destroying families in lieu of enhancing lives in a beautiful place. It may be worth looking into at this point. I'm terrified of being a resident. Of Thank you. Miss Thank, Thank you. you for your yes. consideration. And I, I just want to, uh, I know it was difficult for you to get it here today, so I appreciate the, your passion on this and that we do know that it is with the courts and we don't really oversee the courts nor the sheriff's department. Uh, so uh, we understand your problems and uh, I just want to say I, I recognize the difficulty for you to be here today and the passion that you both bring to this. I appreciate and with the um ombudsman, which none of us can say, um, was incredibly efficient. Yes. And, and I think helped tremendously. Thank you very much, and we do wish you the best.